Our final two speakers are going to um, talk one after another. So we have Shauna Wells followed by Jordan Hevner. Thank you. Thank you, my pink hats. <laughs> There's a saying often quoted by feminists, the truth will set you free, but first it will piss you off. Today, I'm sorry to say I'm going to piss you off by telling you the truth about president, the president's budget proposal and what it means for women. The New York Times conducted an investigation of the proposed budget. They used a method of analysis known as gender-based budgeting, and I want to tell you more about that, but in a minute. First, the New York Times analysis found the deepest cuts in the president's budget would be in programs that disproportionately affect women. Proposed cuts in Medicaid, housing assistance, and low-income energy assistance, SNAP benefits, cash welfare, all programs where more than 60% of funds are spent on women. We know these women to be mothers with children, senior citizen women, differently abled women, homeless women, and working but poor women. But wait, there's more. Of the programs that address women's issues directly, the Office of Violence Against Women, Child Care and Development Block Grants, Title X, Maternal and Child Health Block Grants, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, Family Violence Prevention and Services, all would remain flat funded. The Women's Bureau, which is a small office dedicated to promoting working women, would be cut 76% and there would be no funding at all to establish a paid parental leave program which would benefit both mothers and fathers with six weeks paid leave. And it's not just cuts and flat funding, because funding rules can change. The budget makes changes that would impact who can receive services under Title X, which provides funding to family planning clinics. And it wouldn't be just American women injured. Oxfam America calls this budget an attack on women around the world. Programs with exclusive focus on gender equality and women's empowerment are cut by 61%, much higher than the overall 32% cut to inter uh, international affairs. White House Budget Director Mick Mulvaney said, yes, feel free to boo. He said, we are no longer going to measure compassion by the number of programs or the number of people on those programs. We're going to measure compassion and success by the number of people we help get off those programs and to get back in charge of their own lives. Um, they're already in charge of their lives, but without a livable minimum wage, with about, without reasonable housing and child care costs, without affordable health insurance, people cannot just be dumped off system supports and be expected to thrive. And those folks who are seniors or differently abled, are they doomed to subsistence living because they're unable to work? Do they have no value other than a monetary one? Thanks, Ebenezer Scrooge. Uh, they'd rather die than had better do it and decrease the surplus population. Are you pissed off yet? Yeah. Okay, good. Hang on to that for one more sec, because I want to tell you more about this gender-based budgeting. Over 80 countries have been using it for years, but not the U.S., of course. Gender budgeting is a way for governments to promote equality through fiscal policy. While feminist advocates have tended to concentrate on laws and social policy, gender budgeting focuses on the national purse strings. It's helped a number of countries identify equity goals, allocate assets, improve conditions by reducing barriers, educating and employing women, which in turn boosted their country's financial growth and increased tax revenue. While the truth of this budget pisses us off, it also sets us free to do the work of advocacy. We must educate our legislators about gender-based budgeting if they don't already know about it, and insist this type of analysis be done on every future draft budget, city, state, and federal. And we must remind our legislators that investing in women in all of our beautiful diversity is investing in our nation. And to our president, 
who believes our country should be run like a corporation, I say 51% of your shareholders are women and we're not happy with our return on our investment. Thank you.